Saturday night. Welcome aboard. Murder Hobo Wink goes live with a one shot. A uh, bit of a cast mix up tonight, but we are ready to go. Uh, should be a really fun time. Or I'll just kill them both early and you can go back to watching whatever you were doing. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to be on this show or on the Tuesday talk show, not this Tuesday, that's something else, uh, hit us up, mhobo Inc. Twitter or Gmail. Uh, we'll see if we can get you on there. Uh, and if you want some cool stuff, I'm not wearing any of the shirt. Got my phone case. Uh, I got the bath mat in there, whatever. Uh, if you want any of that cool shit, link is down below. Check that out. Uh, if you want some personalized dice, uh, and who doesn't love new math rocks? Uh, producer was currently working on David's uh, this week. Check out Pirate Dog Dice over on Twitter. See if she's got the time, the inclination, or the interest in doing it for you. And if your game stinks on like ours, or smells like success, uh, Odd Fish Games has something called Adventure Sense. Over 60 of them, actually. Most of them are pleasant. Some of them are horrific uh, by design. Check them out at odd, or oddfishgames.com, also at Oddfish Games. Uh, and they also have something called the Shine System. So if you want to be a writer, only better or gooder than me, uh, check out the Shine System. Okay. That being said, tonight we have a one shot. Uh, we've only got two players, they're going to be fourth level. Uh, and I'll go ahead and fill in the details here in just a minute. Let's introduce you to the cast first. We will start with Kevin. Kevin, who are you and who are you playing? Hello, I'm Kevin. I'm a cast member at Murder Hobo Inc. And I'm mainly on the Calamity A campaign where I play Tall, our paladin fun guy. And not, not a fun guy. I just realized it sounds like I'm a mushroom person. That's not true. Uh, I'm an uh, actual guy who was fun. <laughs> That's what I guess I'm trying to say. And she's not the fun either. But anyway, I digress. Um, and I do the one shots here sometimes. I've been starting to do some of the between the roles on Tuesdays. Those are really cool. Been doing some world building, some GM tips, lots of cool, fun stuff with that. And uh, I also have my own show, Game Night Heroes, which is out there doing storytelling as well. But uh, tonight we're talking about a one shot. And tonight's one shot, I am playing a new character. I am playing Carrick, who is a half orc gloomstalker ranger, who is paired up with Carrie's character tonight to do some mischievous and shenanigans what is a gloom stalker gloom stalker they're like they like hunt in the dark and Ooh, i like that creepy stuff yeah oh yeah fun stuff we shall see momentarily yes yes we shall uh what's the address to get to game night heroes oh yeah well i'm at kevran games on all the socials and then game night heroes is at game night heroes and uh you can go to GameNightHeroes.com, and we're on all the different platforms for listening. Lots of fun stuff out there. there are over 40 episodes right now, so come check us out. And he edits, so it's <laughs> not like the shit that we spew out here. He he does editing, so much to his chagrin, though. I, yeah, it's true. It's true. It's uh, That's the, the most funnest part of the production. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm missing out. Eh, you know not. what you really are well if you ever want to do mine frank line right up buddy i don't think you'd like that <laughs> it's probably like he spray paints yeah that's, that's, i'm a fantastic mini painter uh last but certainly not least is the producer carrie carrie tell us about yourself tell us about your character my name is carrie i make dice i hang out with cats um tonight i am playing <laughs> i let my husband pick these characters uh chloric Leechman, nice. a barbarian berserker, dragonborn, uh, chaotic neutral. So we'll see how that works out. Green dragon. Green. Chloric. 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 I see what you did there. Ah, I see a little gameplay. Uh, okay, boys and girls. Here's Is that thanks is. to the shine system that you were able to come up with that? Actually, no. Uh, I, oh. I write... I write like a tool, so I probably need tools. <laughs> but I write a, a lot. He ran across across Chloris Leachman on the internet today. <laughs> so there you go. Hey, you're lucky I didn't go with Phyllis Diller. Uh, uh, don't look at my browsing history. It's just not appropriate. Yeah, sometimes. mine's worse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, folks, here's the scoop. Uh, these two were part of a party. Maybe uh, four other players. Maybe two other players. Doesn't really matter. Uh, they went on a mission, a recon mission, for a guy named Baron Helmbeek. 
uh, his uh, frontier is being threatened by a humanoid force. Uh, he sent this wild crew in to go ahead and get the skinny on these guys. Uh, unfortunately, these are the only two survivors, and they're being chased by the humanoid horde. Uh, they have started to outdistance them, which is a positive. Uh, the Baron's Land uh, resides right next to a halfling kingdom. Uh, when these, when this guy, when this group got cut off, they got flanked, so they had to head towards the halfling kingdom. Uh, in doing so, they know that there are a line of forts uh, along a ridge line. Uh, they're hoping to get some help there. But as you guys close in, uh, kind of late in the afternoon, uh, you're pretty sure you you've lost the humanoids for now. Uh, but ahead of you is Daedalus Fortress, and it ain't looking so good. Uh, a lot of stones are missing. Uh, half the wall is missing. Uh, there's a lot of debris uh to make matters worse uh the grounds are quite eh, muddy uh so it, it, it's kind of ugly here let me go up and uh, throw up a graphic here because i can Beautiful. let's just make sure i don't do the wrong wrong one i think that's the right one uh can you guys see that okay yep. oh yeah how's that look okay that's so, lovely. so you guys Beautiful. are coming from the north which would actually be the West, uh, you are dead center. Uh, this area here is debris. Uh, this used to be the front entrance. Uh, you can tell that a lot of the structures inside are knocked down. Uh, this structure and this structure can be seen uh, just over the uh, 20 foot wall. So, uh, we will begin here in the center initially, uh, where all these crumbled stones are. Uh, clearly the gatehouse, whoop, gone. Uh, you may call out, uh, but you can tell that the ramparts seem to be vacant. What do you want to do? Well, I think we lost them, so uh, let's take a look around to be sure. Uh, I'm going to do a look around just to make sure there's nobody else hiding here, or maybe some of the halflings are using this as a staging ground of some sort to maybe ambush people like ourselves who are foolish enough to hide here? Sure. Uh, peek inside through the open area and a look down at the mud. Give me a, give me an investigation check. Okay. Please. Everyone? You can if you like. Oh, as right. a ranger, he has uh, improved abilities. Mm -hmm. I got a 16 to start us off tonight. Uh, That's not bad. 17. Nice. Uh, you guys both noticed that there are rotting corpses on the ramparts. There are rotting corpses uh, just underneath the opening area, uh, the debris field. Uh, there are goblins, uh, hobgoblins, both of which you're running from. Uh, there are also dead halflings. Uh, there does not appear any armor around, so... Somebody has already started uh, nitpicking away. Uh, as you guys are looking around, I'll take initiative from both of you as you hear an unusual noise. Oh boy, here we go. Ah, oh, motherfucker. Five. Off to a good start. <laughs> <laughs> With my initiative bonus, that's going to be an 18 for me. Very nice. Uh, you guys hear like glopping noises. Uh, as you start to look around, the muddy field here is coagulating and moving into some kind of unusual form. Oh, goody. Uh, I will take a high arcana check if you want to see if you can figure it out. Uh, well, uh, I'm an idiot. I don't think I will figure it out, but I'll try. Yeah, and intelligence was my dump stats. So let's see how we do. Um, Nine. <laughs> Arcana, you said, with a negative one, that gives me a four. <laughs> nice. Uh, you guys don't know what these things are. However, uh, Carrick the Ranger, you are up first. There appear to be two of these things. Uh, they seem to be mud men or mud humanoids or something covered in mud uh, and not the cool, oh, I'm going to take a spa day mud. Uh, mud they're, with not, they're not too hot chicks covered in mud. or anything. Not too hot chicks at okay. all. But there's two of them. One is going after you. 
what is going after your uh, chlorine? <laughs> well, shit. I say, and I draw both of my hand axes, and I'm going to move towards the nearest one, and I'm going to just kind of give what for. Sure, go ahead. All righty. I'm coming in with the first attack is going to be a 14. That hits. And the second one's going to be a 9. Uh, that misses. Okay, so the hit's going to be... D6, I'm rolling a murder hobo die. Nice. Which always roll high. So make sure you guys come guest star a couple times and get some for yourself. I see, now I jinxed it with a one. <laughs> so that damage is going to be five. <laughs> wow. Nicely done. Uh, nine goes next, and that would be these creatures. I think I only get one attack. Oh, I have two different attacks. Uh, but I only get one of them. So I will murder Hobo Die on Cork. Uh, two. Uh, one of the creatures just vomits mud at you. I'm going to need a DC 11 versus dexterity. For both? Just from you. <clears throat> oh, I got 20. Oh, uh, you will not lose your turn. Uh, Carrick, the other one uh, tries to punch you in the face. All right. Uh, 12 plus 3, 15. A 15 will hit me. Uh, it smashes into you with kind of a muddy fist. Uh Uh, only four hit points of damage, though. Uh, not exactly uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. Uh, Cloric, you are up. This thing has just vomited mud all over you, but you are not blinded. You're just pissed. What would uh, you like to do? I will use my hand axe. Oh, shit. <laughs> you gotta switch dice. Uh, eight. <laughs> eight is a miss. Damn it. Uh, we move to the next round of business here. Carrick, uh, you got punched in the bush. Ooh, don't want to be punched there. Um, okay, I'm going to uh, invoke some uh, magical energies, some arcane power from the land around me, and I'm going to go ahead and yell out some uh, nice orcish tongue language, and I'm going to cast Ensnaring Strike. Uh, that is a uh, bonus action. So I won't be able to double attack this round, but as I cast it, my one of my hand axes gets a little bit uh, glowy for a second, and I swing it at the mud guy. Um, it's going to be... Okay, hopefully a 12 will hit. A 12 does hit. Oh, okay, good. So then I'm going to do the damage, and I did a little bit high on the damage last time I misread my sheet, so this damage is going to be... See, now we got the hobo. That damage is going to be an 8. And uh, the ensnaring strike is going to be, as it hits, thorny vines come out of the, the hand axe, start wrapping around the creature and holding it in place as best it can. Nice. So um, it has to do a strength saving throw. Uh, not, not a strong suit. Uh, 11. 11. The DC was 13. So it is going to be restrained by magical vines until the spell ends. Yeah. Does it get a yeah. chance to break loose on its own turn? It, uh, let me look real quick. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it can do a, um, if it's a stream of the vines, it can do a strength check on its turn to try to escape. It, the, is, same it's, it is its turn. Uh, ooh, 18 on the roll, minus one, 17. So it will break loose to the oh. other side, but it does not get to attack this round. Uh, on Chloric, uh, that's a six. Uh, it spits mud on you again. Give me a DC 11 versus Dex. Uh, <laughs> four. It spits mud in your eye, and you will have to uh, wipe the mud out of your eye. Ergo, you lose this turn on this round. Uh, we're moving quick into round three. Carrick, you're back up. 
Oh my goodness. Okay, that is quick. I'm going to kind of survey, see what's going on. I can tell this is definitely going to be a little bit more uh, of a encounter than I anticipated. So now I'm going to cast Hunter's Mark. So I use the magical power. I pull it down onto the mud guy in front of me and try to mark him as my favorite quarry for this fight. And then we'll go ahead and try to attack again. That's a bonus action to cast too. So again, just one attack. But uh, the attack for this is going to be a 11. Uh, that hits. 11 oh, okay. is the magic number. Excellent. All right. So I'm going to do 1d6 plus 2 for the attack. Extra d6 for the... And we've got a 4 and a 3. It's a 7 plus 2. 9 points of damage. Hand axe carves into his side for a moment. Nicely done. Uh, covered in mud, uh, the thing grimaces maybe apparently in pain uh as you dig deep uh but it still stands we now move to their turn so on court uh this time it's going to try and take a punch <laughs> no not with a four on the roll uh on carrot uh, another fist attack and there be the first nat 20 of the night. It connects, yes, here we go. It connects hard. Uh, for four whopping muddy points. Uh, Oof. You now have splotches of mud. Now he's taking the old, you know, Sugar Ray Leonard, Mike Tyson pose. Oh, yeah. Warwick, uh, this time it tried to punch you and it missed. You are now up. This is round three. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, 13? Yep, 11's your magic number. Okay, you, so... You connect with the muddy foe. All right, so... Mud foe. <laughs> Mo Mofo? Mud foe? Wow. Mofo. One, two, three, four, so I get nine. Ooh, big dick damage uh, for this thing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> round four. We're just zipping along, boys and girls. Carrick, you're up. It's time to finish this thing off. It sure is. I'm going to have just uh, my Hunter's Mark is still going. I'm going to double attack this bad boy. See what we got going. Okay. First one's going to be a seven. <laughs> and the second one's going to be a 14, though. That hits. It's indeed. So damage is going to be. Again, three, six plus two. Uh, that's going to be Not nine. Uh, nine damage, you say? Yes, nine. Yep. Yours explodes uh, and mud goes everywhere. I'm going to need a DC 11 versus dexterity, or you will be covered in a load of mud. <laughs> um, 13. Uh, you managed to close your eyes, so you are covered in mud. As you blink open your eyes, you've got those on the face. <laughs> cool open areas. Uh, with only one left on Coric. Uh Yeah, that's going to try and punch you again. Uh, with a two, I am digressing horribly. Coric, uh, you're up. Uh, Twelve. That hits. I'll go with my great axe again, or my hand axe, nice. and seven. Hmm. Round five, Carrick. Uh, yours is gone. Uh, mm -hmm. Settled back down onto the ground that it was. Cloric is still battling with hers. What would you like to do? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull that hunter's mark on over to make sure I keep this in our favor here. Yep. And I'm going to just move up and try to aid my ally here. See what I can do. So that's just one attack. Here we go. Let's make this a good one. Uh, 15 plus, what I got? Plus nine, yep. I think? No, not plus nine. What is it? 15 is enough, though. I don't even need to add it up, do I? Nope. You're good. <laughs> All right. Damage for this is going to be a hobo, which is a six, and a three, which is nine plus two, 11 points. And come in, just hack right down into the guy's collarbone and reeve down through his throat. Nicely done. Awesome sound effects from the dog, too. Oh, that's right. right. You carve it in half. Uh, yeah. It explodes again. Korok and Carrick 
Gonna need you to make that DC 11 dexterity as mud spews forth. Like uh, watching brazzers. <laughs> Two. You um, are coated in mud. Fourteen. You are not coated in mud. Uh, you're starting to look a little bit like Al Jolson. Uh, <laughs> I jump behind her. <laughs> it's good for the, my complexion. The mud is just from here down. Right. Uh, so uh, after a few turns of Chloric picking the mud out of her draconian face, uh, you guys look around. Uh, okay, you have defeated... Uh, the creatures and the mud has returned to its stillness. A quick look around on the horizon reveals nope, no humanoid army, so you're still safe. <clears throat> At this point in time, you are right here in the middle of this uh, these stones. Uh, what would you like to do? Well, that was messed up. <laughs> oh, man. That was your easy things. encounter, too. Uh, oh, boy. I need a shower. Yeah. Uh, well, I have no idea what the hell those things were, but uh, they were a little tough to put down than I anticipated. Golgotha. <laughs> we're well, sure anyway. we want to hide here. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see if there's anything we can take with us. Well, sift through the mud. Well, not uh, no, not there. Like further into the sure the little area. Well, the fortress is half destroyed. Uh, directly in front of you. Uh, right about here, you'll see some debris. I don't have this map fully fleshed out. But right here's some debris. Uh, over to the left, looks like, uh, or your right, my left, uh, kind of looks like a temple kind of thingy, maybe ish. Uh, Are there and any then, dead people around it? Uh, there's dead people everywhere. <laughs> Do they look like they were fighting each other? Yes. Okay. It was definitely halfling versus humanoid. Uh, this is a tower, and it's two stories. Well, maybe we should try the tower and see if we can get a vantage point and look around the area. Good maybe idea. See, what, see what's up. Sure. You can tell that the uh, top parapet of that uh, is in pieces, so that is not good. Uh, as you meander across the courtyard, again, you find corpses, both humanoid and halfling. Uh, some some weapons are still present. All of the weapons left have damage. Uh, the bodies have been stripped. Uh, oh. You cannot you cannot tell by what or by whom. Uh, you also notice that there are a bunch of bushes uh, between you and this tower. So if you want to check out the tower, you could cut through the bushes or you can go around. Your choice. How big are the bushes? Raspberry sized bushes. Do they have thorns? They do have thorns. They also have fruit on them. Do we know what well, kind of fruit? Nope, they're have to go investigate. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can I'm hungry. Rawr, let's have some berries. <laughs> Give me that dragonborn physiology. Always hungry. <laughs> the vegan dragonborn. I oh, am nice. a barbarian, so, she you is know. unusual in the tribe. Give me an investigation and then a nature check. For it. Okay. <sighs> Investigation. Can I uh, take a look around too? Or? Sure. Lord yeah. seven. <laughs> and nature. Ooh. 21. Uh, you notice that they are pink. Well, uh, what are, what's your rules, Carrot? Uh, well, I got for the investigation, I got a 12. And for the nature, I rolled pretty low. So I got a three. Oh, very nice. Uh, you are unfamiliar with what the berries are. You are smart enough to avoid the thorns. Chloric, you are not smart enough to avoid the thorns and take one hit point of damage, but you realize that these grayish pinkish berries are quite nutritious and have some curative healing perspective. Uh, you are familiar that you have to eat a handful. On these bushes, there are three handfuls to pluck. I take them all. Oh, okay. Fuck you, Carrot. It's <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm not going to share. <laughs> I'm not, like, just throwing them in my mouth. <laughs> I take them all. I'm just going, yeah. son of a bitch, this hurts. God damn it, mother Maybe fucker. go around, yeah, reach around yeah. that part. Shut uh, up. Don't talk. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you have three handfuls of berries. Each one will do 1d4 plus one curative. Uh, you've plucked all of the mature berries off of it. Carrot kind of gives you the old raised eyebrow, like, are you sure those are edible kind of things? Because his uh, nature role was not that it's great. It's fine. Don't talk to me. This hurts. Ah, love. Uh, love between associates. Uh, as, you, <laughs> as you kind of uh, survey this area, this is open tundra here, all this brown stuff. Uh, you've got a building, a small uh, one-story structure. This, again, is two stories. This is also two stories. Looks like a temple. Uh, these stairs go to just a broken area. These stairs all go up on the ramparts. Uh, there's obviously something underneath the ramparts, but not here because uh, it's all caved in. So you guys wanted to look at the tower? Yeah, if we could. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> as you head that way, there's only one opening. Uh, all of the construction of this fortress is field stone, by the way. So it's uneven layers of stone. Uh, it was probably pretty solidly built, although it looks like it has sustained a significant amount of injury or damage rather. Uh, this tower is two stories, looks like it was three, but there's stones littering the area, pockets of overgrowth, etc. As you go into this area, there is a main pillar. So this is cramped. Uh, give me insight checks, both of you. Uh, 17. Uh, uh, 14. Uh, Carrick, with your uh, experience as a ranger, you surmise that this was probably used only as a lookout tower and nothing else. It was certainly not a uh, fortification of any significance. Uh, the main stonework in the center was merely used to hold up the additional floors. So you don't have a lot of high hopes finding anything. Uh, do you guys enter? Uh, yeah, let me uh, take a look around, make sure there's not any traps or anything weird. <laughs> I mean, I doubt it, but, you know, make sure it's sturdy too. You know, the rubble here is a little beat up. So I want to make sure the roof's not going to cave in on us the second we step in here. Sure, I'll take survival. Survival. Dear God. Or investigation. Your choice. What caused all this damage? I'm good at survival, being a ranger. Um, <laughs> uh, that's going to be a 19. Uh, you don't find any traps. And uh, while the upper third floor is pretty much destroyed, uh, it's a, it was solidly built. Uh, so you're thinking it's probably going to be OK. All right. Ladies first, or you want me to go up? <laughs> I trust the smart guy, but you can go ahead. Nice. And I'll, I'll climb all the way up as high as I can and just to try to get a look around the area. Sure. Uh, as you get around to the uh, high corner where the stairs are, uh, you find a suit, a beautiful suit, or top half of half plate uh, just laying on the stairs. Uh, this is the first piece of equipment that you've seen that has not been destroyed. And it is merely just laying right there on the stairs for you to snap up. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, that's a bit peculiar if everything else has been taken from here. So I'm going to uh, investigate it, try to make sure it's not a, a trap itself or it's got a, I don't know, a weird spell on it or something, a, a disease. I don't know, something weird. Sure. Uh, as you approach, you notice smashed up against the center support and actually embedded uh, partially into the support is a goblin uh, that looks like it has had the shit bashed out of it. Does it look like he was wearing that piece of armor? Armor was much too big for him to be wearing it. It's almost too big for a halfling. Hmm. Huh. That's weird. Um, I'm going to leave it for now. I want to go up to the very top and look out to the horizon see if anybody's coming make sure we lost the people we were running from uh, and again to make sure there's no halflings of this area who might be have heard or seen our fighting or moving in on us sure uh step over the armor with a d20 
Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, just straight D20 is an yep. eight. Chloric, uh, do you follow Carrick? Yes. Same thing, straight up D20. 15. You guys are both cautious enough. You uh, step over the peculiar armor, uh, go up one flight, notice a lot of rubble, two dead goblins, three dead halflings, uh, and just the short shoot. The stairwell is still intact for the third floor. So as you creep up to that point, you can see off in the distance uh, in the plains that you guys have already traveled, uh, a small bunches of bonfires have started uh in your expert opinion you believe that the humanoid army uh having not found you or tracked you very well is setting up a camp awesome well, that's a good sign i like that yeah. so about that armor uh what do we think i mean you probably can't wear something like that can you uh, slow you down a little too much yeah uh, i don't <coughs> think so would it fit you it probably fit me. I don't know if I uh, like something that flashy, but... Oh, we could uh, always throw some mud on it. <laughs> that's true. We could. <laughs> well, There's nothing uh, else you can sell it. Yeah, that's true. Let me uh, let me go down and gingerly move it out of the way. Um, Use a stick. Sticks yeah. are good. Use a Use stick, yeah. I, poke it with is a there stick. like a little goblin spear or anything like that laying around? Uh, yeah, if you if you go over the armor again, I have uh, a staff. Oh, well, that works too. Here, you can borrow my staff. Thanks. As she stands behind you on the narrow stairwell, exactly. <laughs> That's fine. I'm going to stand far enough away the the full reach of the staff. I'm thinking about my old dungeon crawling days before I was a mercenary, and I'm going to try to reach out very gingerly and just kind of poke and prod at the armor as uh, far away as I can. Sure. You uh, use the stick, kind of use it as leverage, kind of flip it over. Uh, the back is upright. You flip it over, and there, right in the middle of the breastplate, is is kind of a nice gem. It's about yay big around, maybe a red jasper. Uh, so it looks like it was commander uh, nice. armor. Nice. Look at that shit. You could just be all high and mighty. And with that, the armor rises uh, up on its own. Of course. <laughs> so I'll take initiative oh. as you guys face off with the animated armor. Oh, now we now we die. <laughs> okay, uh, initiative. Uh, Eleven, I got. I got a seventeen. Animated armor goes first. Oh yeah. Uh, odd even. Uh, that's an eight even. It's going after carrot. Uh, it launches itself, but careens off the side of the stairwell with a six. Uh, Twelve is up. Chloric, holy shit, the armor's animated. God damn it. I knew this was going to happen. Uh, so, let's see. <clears throat> uh, 18? Oh, yeah. So, I use my great axe, and... 1d12 plus 4. You like jump down after it? Or? Son of a bitch. That just went on the floor. Just gonna jump onto your shoulders. Uh, you guys are two kobolds in a trench coat. <laughs> 12. Nice. 12? Mm -hmm. uh, that's not bad. Uh, Karak, uh, holy shit, the armor is cursed. What do you want to do? Well, I hate being right. Um... I'm going to go ahead and um, <clears throat> still up in the tower. Now, if I understand correctly, it fell out of this little tower we're standing in, so it's down on the ground, or it's up here with us still? Uh, it is uh, trying to smash its way into the stairwell where you guys are at. Gotcha. All right, so it's up here. So. All righty. Um, I'm going to uh, draw my longbow, mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to uh, take, take aim. Sure. There's a little more damage, so hopefully this will help us out a little bit. Uh, 18 plus 4 is a 22 to hit. That hits. So D8 plus two. Uh, D8 this one. Uh, it's going to be eight points of damage. Because nice. I let one loose. Very nice. 20 points of damage so far. Moving us into round two. Uh, undeterred. Uh, the damn armor is coming after. 
two, uh, Cloric, uh, it hurls its animated self at you. I think it got you. 13 plus 4, 17. Yes. Smashes you into the stairwell wall for 2 plus 2, 4 hit points of damage. <laughs> uh, but you are not prone, so it is now your attack. Okay. You might want to get a little pissed now, okay? <laughs> so, okay, I just rolled straight up 19 to hit. Hit? Uh, yeah, so I don't know how oh, the oh. whole rage thing works. Uh, you can rage, and I think you had a D6. Kevin, have you ever played a barbarian? You know, it, it's been a hot minute. Um, I think it's uh, you get some bonuses. Yeah. I think the bonuses are listed right in the middle, if I'm not mistaken, on that sheet. I forgot to copy it over so I cannot look. Let's Way see, last to minute, go. Rounds, blah, blah, Rage. Blah. It doesn't really say. So anyway. Yeah. Basically, I'll... if you, uh, yeah, if you, uh, you have advantage on strength checks, strength saving throws, if you attack with a melee weapon, you get a bonus to the damage roll uh, equal to uh, your chart, which we're level four. So that's going to be a plus uh, two. And um, take half damage. To yeah, you take half me. damage from everything except for psychic damage. Well, okay. Damage. So I get uh, so you're a berserker, six. right? Six. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so you fly to a friend, frenzy, basically. So, yeah, you, uh, yeah. Okay. You're going to start kicking the shit out of it, is what you're going to do. Yes. Oh, son of a bitch. Uh, four, eight damage. Did you add your plus two for your rage? Yes. Nice. Fair enough. Uh, Carrick, uh, your associate starts to drool. Messes up her hair. She looks like Mel Gibson off Lethal Weapon. I still starts, have mud all over me. Starts That's doing it. this uh, and goes ape shit. You're up. I'm glad I'm behind her with the bow. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to fire again over her shoulder as best I can. Hopefully, I don't get a nat one because those are fun on Murder Hobo Inc. Yeah. Um, uh, 17 to hit. And then I could turn around and rage at you. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> 17, uh, your missile finds its mark. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. With a five damage, it uh, slams into the uh, armor, animated armor. Uh, your aim is true. Your arrow just hits that uh, Jasper gemstone, knocking it right out of the armor. Uh, it tink, tink, tink down the stairs, and the armor collapses right on the stairs itself. Hey. Uh, there's a little death rattle. Uh, and then silence. I reach Clark's down, heavy breathing. I take the armor and I start whacking it against the side of the wall. Stupid sure. fucking um, armor. You, might, you might, might as well ruin it now. Yeah. <laughs> right. well, that's fair. Carrick, what do you want to do? I'm going to let her uh, work out her frustrations here. I'm going to just sure. stand back for a minute. I'm going to look around, make sure there's nothing else that might be animating about to try to kill us. And uh, yeah, I just kind of let her die down, relax. I'm gonna check the uh, draw on my bow, make sure everything's okay. Put it back. You know, double sure. check my hand axes. Give me a perception check. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, Twelve plus. Excuse me. Um, Twelve plus five, seventeen. Uh, nothing else is animating, uh, and that jump stone appears to be intact on the ground or on the stone floor. Should we? Well, that I will take then. Well, fair enough. And that's going to be a 100 gold piece gem. So Perfect. it's not like haunted or whatever at this point? No. Okay. The gem was enchanted in the armor. Ah. Uh, so you have Oops. now destroyed the armor, creating just a cacophony <laughs> of noise. So if there's anything else roaming around, they've heard you. That's Great. fine. I will fucking take them all down. Rawr. <laughs> nice. Easy, girl. <laughs> uh, after destroying the armor, frogs feel better. Uh, your rage has subsided. Whew. I, I feel good. I, I feel I feel powerful, Rock. I needed that. Oh, 
Uh, you guys did more damage to that than you did against the mud methods about. Yeah, that went a lot easier than I thought it was going to. I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the good news is. Uh, what, time, now, what time of the day is this? I'm sorry. I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Uh, no, you're fine. Uh, it, you guys need to make camp. That's what you're looking for. So it's right, dusk. Right, right, right. That's why you can see all of the uh, fires. Yeah, we should probably That's just right. stay Perfect. here. Yeah, Abba, you had mentioned that there is a spot underneath the, the ramparts up in the northwestern corner of the map, if I have my cardinal directions right. I, I did indeed. Okay. Uh, that might be an area we could maybe have cover. Uh, if we do want to start a fire, it won't be seen, perhaps. <clears throat> or maybe we could even go inside that temple area or you know something that's enclosed that if we want to have a fire, it might be a little more hidden. Oh, I apologize. There was another building to the south, like in the middle in the there. Uh, you guys are here. Mm -hmm. There's a structure here. Yeah, what was There's that again? Temple. Uh, you do not know what that is. That okay. is a one-story structure, though. Gotcha. Uh, the temple-esque looking thing, and this is actually inverted, so it should look like a plus sign. Uh, and then that area as well. Right, that area there by the stairs is where I was initially talking. But yeah, it okay. might be better to go inside of a building because then it's completely enclosed. And with everything being destroyed enough, the smoke would still escape. But we might be, the light would be hidden is what I'm more concerned about. Now, the temple actually looks like it's in pretty good condition. Oh, okay. Uh, is there any sort of insignia of a, of a god or a group of some sort? We can know what there temple is this a, is to. There is a crescent moon on it, so they must be Arabic. Okay. Well, uh, they could be pagan. You don't know. Could be pagan. Yeah. Could be Lucky Charms. Mm -hmm. Could be uh, okay. an I Irish deity. That'd be pretty awesome. I find the green temple. clovers. Yeah, well, I agree then. Let's check it out first. My, you head over you to the know, temple. Nervous barbarian nature. <laughs> sure. You notice that there are there is a portcullis. Uh, actually, it's more like barred gates. Uh, in front, and they are secure. There is a uh, rudimentary padlock on there, uh, but in order to gain entry, you're going to have to destroy that padlock and probably make a lot of noise in the process. Yeah, that's loud too. Well, but it's probably locked for a reason. Yeah, yeah, that's where they keep the keep the creepy things. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, well, let's go check out that one story building then. That works. Uh, we could be inside. Right here. Okay, do you want to go in this door or this door? Let's split this small party and just eat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so far, so far, that would have paid off. <laughs> um, well, it looks like the one there on the northern side is probably the closest to where we're currently standing. So I'll just make my way there and investigate the door. Sure. Uh, the door is uh, wood. Uh, it has a couple arrows stuck in it. A quick look of it. Shows goblin arrows, probably belonging to one of these bastards that uh, helped destroy the keep. Uh, it's currently shut, uh, but the doorknob's missing, so it doesn't look like it's locked. Give me a perception check. Ooh, eight, 19 plus 5 is 24 for me. Oh, Lord. All of my dice suck tonight. Uh, four. Uh, Cloric, you're keeping an eye on your six to make sure that you guys don't get jacked I'm still up. Still flaking mud uh, off of myself. Sure, Carrick. Uh, you hear metal on metal noises inside this chamber. Hmm. Mm, interesting. Um. Well, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure if we are alone here now. Um, and Carrick, what is your race? I'm a half orc. Okay. So you have dark vision as well. Yeah, and with my um, being a gloom stalker, my dark vision is extended, so I actually have dark vision of ninety feet. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, wait here a second. I'm going to sneak in here, see what this is real quick. Mm. Sure. You, op you open the door. D twelve against me. Five. Ten. Uh, you managed to lift the door a little bit, and ease it open so that it doesn't give a horrific squeal. Uh, in doing so, as you peek in, you see a pair of short, 
squat humanoids uh, looking around. Uh, in the center of this room, in the corner, is a cold fireplace. In front of it is uh, a smithy's anvil. Uh, looking around, you see metal on metal. You see a variety of mundane armor and weapons in here. Uh, but you also see the two squat figures. Give me a stealth roll to make sure that they haven't seen you. Definitely. Um, 11 plus 2. It's a 13. 13. Oh, that's two. They don't hear you coming. Uh, you got one to the left uh, of the anvil, one to the right of the anvil. Okay. I'm going to creep in behind the nearest one. I'm going to have one hand axe in my hand, and I'm just going to say, uh, excuse me, you guys live here? Uh, <laughs> is this la biblioteca. Uh, you tap the goblin on the shoulder and uh, give out the perfunctory warning. Uh, it turns around. Uh, the two of them look at each other, look back at you, and yell out the time-honored scream of Briark. Let's roll initiative as they aren't going to answer that. Yeah. Oh, natural oh, 20 that's just number not even nice. two. Oh, man, Frank. Why, yeah. Well, I've got a 23. That be, well, that does not beat a nat 20. It does that's, not, that's, unfortunately. That's good. Close, though. 18 plus 5. <clears throat> nice. Do I even and, know what's happening? Uh, you're guarding the door, so you will attack last. Okay. Uh, the goblins... Been too happy with you. Uh, eat pig snout, you filthy half orc. Uh, well, that's the, just no, no. rude. No, no, no. <laughs> the, the goblin that you tapped on is the boss. Its first attack, ooh, uh, seven plus four is an 11. I'm that will miss me. This. Its second attack, a disadvantage. Nine is the low one. 13, I'm assuming that's a miss. A 13 hits me exactly. Oh, okay. Uh, its associate uh, is going to go ahead and throw a hammer at you. <laughs> awesome. And it sails over your head. Uh, but the Goblin Boss connects with a 3 plus 2, 5 damage. Uh, but it is your turn because you are Johnny on the spot. Hey, uh, Cloric, I yell out as the hand axe spins in up into a battle stance, and I swing at that goblin boss, who is all up in my grill. You know, I don't like goblin Springsteen. Sorry, boss man. Um, <laughs> we're going to yeah. go ahead and do... <laughs> uh, that's a 17 plus 4. It's a... Uh, excuse me, that's a 21 to hit. That is. And actually, I was doing some business wrong with my, um, my class... Uh, so actually, I was supposed to get extra attacks, but that's fine. We're going to make it work. Um, it just yet. the one. Just the, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just the one uh, attack. You said that hit. That's going to be 1d6 plus 2. Uh, it's going to be six points of damage. Nice. And then a second attack, because it's the first round. I get a Gloomstalk bonus to attack because of a dreadful ambush that I have. Sure. Uh, that's going to be a 17 plus 4. Now the 21. Beautiful, beautiful. Nice. And the damage on that is going to be minimum. It's just going to be three points of um, damage there. But, uh, yeah, I'm Better ready for more. Uh, Cloric, you hear Carrick call out. Uh, you don't know what he's bitching about. <laughs> Could be anything, really. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I assume I hear the urgency in his voice, so I turn around and I grab him by the collar and I throw him behind me. Cool! Uh, hit Hit him first. <laughs> I've got an AC 13. Uh, 16. Uh, give me a grapple roll. Both of you roll D20. Add your strength bonus. Okay. Uh, 16. Uh, strength. Nice strength, 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 strength. Left high. Yep. Um, so <clears throat> that is 21. Carrick, you find yourself <gasps> flying through the air as Cloric starts her rescue. Not again! <laughs> Either that or there's somebody behind you and you're just going to take it from both ends. Uh, that I ends <laughs> round one. Uh, Cloric, uh, 
goblins don't care. Uh, they're like honey badgers, so they're going to just choose you. Uh, the boss, uh, 14 and a 2 for his second attack. His first attack is a 5. Uh, stunned at the appearance of help. <laughs> And my out hair, the, the mud, soccer. pissed yeah, off you know. the scratches or the berries. <laughs> uh, the other goblin, not so much. Uh, 17. Uh, and he picks up a saber. And he's going to go to town on your ass. Uh, only a 3 plus 2. 5 hit points of damage. Uh, Carrick... What the fuck? You were right there a moment ago. Right. Now your uh, pig lizard is between you and uh, the goblins. You can move up. It's not that far. Uh, join the fray, or you can just sit back and uh, you want to take care of business. <laughs> no, I'm going to come on in. I'm going to uh, help my companion out. That's what we do, you know. Sure. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to move in, and uh, they're both still up, I assume. So. Correct. The one who uh, hit me with the hammer, yep. uh, I'm going to go knock his bell in if I can. I'm going to move in with the hand axe, comes up in, and I have a little bit of a, a deft charge as I move into the room there. Sure. Uh, 18 to hit. That hits. Okay. Luckily, we're rolling good. And uh, uh, four points of damage. I can hit, can't do damage, apparently. He's hurt. No, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah. I just hack into his thigh and slice out through his knee. Yeah, there you go. And now he can no longer be an adventurer. Uh, hey, you know. Cloric, your associate, uh, while I'm sure pleasantly happy that you took both attacks, uh, has joined the fray, uh, and he is off to your right side uh, attacking the short goblin. Uh, the lead goblin there that he has done uh, a good chunk of damage to is in front of you. Uh <clears throat> I race forward to kiss him. A distraction technique. Yes. Uh, go ahead and see if you can hit him. I'll let you roll the advantage since you aren't trying to finish him off. 17. Good enough. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. I overuse it anyway. Give me a performance roll with your charisma. <laughs> Well, I'm forcing it on him. It's not like I'm asking. Goblins, goblins like aggressive women. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I rolled a 20. Oh, well, he is intrigued. <laughs> uh, the celestial berry white music starts playing <laughs> somewhere in the background as the goblin is uh, taken off guard. <laughs> I go to uh, kiss him, and as I stick my tongue in his mouth, I unleash my poison breath. Oh! oh that, shit! Bad All news right. at Black Rock. Well, that is the opposite of a natural 20. That's <laughs> a one, as you fill his lungs with gas. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is not going to go well. How much damage are you going to do? Uh, let's see. Trumpet. <laughs> hey, I was gonna get both of them, but then you know, Ray get in the way. Get in here and like, Ruin it for everybody. save the day. Uh, well, I think it's in the middle. Uh, two d six. Sure. Roll them. DC twelve con save for half damage. Two d six. Okay. Dodge this. <laughs> yeah. Six. Whew. Yeah, he does not like that. His eyes bug out uh, and begins to choke and sputter. We begin round three. He's going to be a disadvantage on both rolls. So uh, he tries to force you off of him. 15 and an 8. So does a 12 hit you? Nope. Uh, so, ooh, 3 and 16. Uh, choking, sputtering. Turning green, eyes bugging out, uh, bloodshot shooting through uh, as you are forcing the edge on him. Uh, the other goblin, 
14 plus 4, 18 uh, on Carrick. Yep. 5 plus 2, 7 damage. Oh, he, boy. He is not happy about what you did to his knee. He he was looking at a scholarship opportunity uh and, and that's gone so you know <laughs> well, he should have he should have thought about that before goblin the university u of, u of g university <laughs> goblin uh is not going to take him now so now he's he's going to get a mundane job uh I'll have to go to gonzaga uh carrick that brings us to you uh you're unhappy yeah, at the corner of my eye, I see what my companion is doing, and I'm just like, "Damn, that's baller as hell!" And then I'm gonna go uh, attack this guy. This again. guy? Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? I put my time in here. No. Um, All righty. So I'm gonna do uh, full on full attack. So I'm gonna do uh, two attacks on this guy. First one, twenty one again. Yep. Second one is seventeen. Yep, both hit. Okay, man. Oh man, I wish I had my hunter's mark up in this right now, but I don't. Oh, we got a hobo for the first damage, so that's going to be uh, six plus two is eight, and the second one is minimum damage of one, so that's going to be three. So eight, three, so eleven. And you're using a what? Hand axes. Uh, your hand axes connect at the top of its skull, and you drive them nice. straight through, right through yeah. his groin, and he just separates uh goo falling That's out super gross <laughs> uh chloric uh boy that guy is pissed off he was happy and now he's pissed uh he can't so, breathe his lungs are full of poison right he's still up so what do you want to do well i'm gonna have to attack <laughs> and i get 20 not natural and yep. yeah. let's see what am i doing uh we will use my great x d12 plus whatever eight, eight, 12. <laughs> oh. beautiful off with his head <laughs> uh and it rolls into the fire pit uh but you have oh, tinder you have, you have significantly <laughs> damaged and a little bit of green gas exits the neckline uh so instead of ripping off his head and shitting down his neck you have just gassed him uh but uh that brings us to the end of this combat you guys have been victorious the -I tiefling would have been proud of me that's, that's right it. Uh, you guys appear to be in what looks like the smithy, or I'm sorry, the armory. Uh, and there's, there's, there's some stuff here. Cool. Like what anything, kind of stuff? Anything good? Weapons and armor. Uh, nice. I will take investigation checks from both of you to see if you find anything really Perfect. super cool. Ugh, God damn it. Oh, got a real super low too. Three for me. Three. Sixteen for me. Uh, you guys find mundane equipment at best. So no magic items. Man, those thieves would have cleared out this town. It's uh, pretty wild. But uh... yeah. Perception checks, both of you. That I'm much better at. <laughs> uh, uh, Twelve. Uh, Ten. Uh, Carrick, uh, you hear a slight scuffling behind the door. Oh, God there's, damn it. there's a door right here. Yes. Leading into the other area, and you hear a little scuffling behind it. Oh, great. <laughs> Probably from all the blood pooling underneath it. That's got to be all it is, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I look over to Chloric, and I'm like, well, uh, you want to get this one this time? Mm. I'm, uh, I'm not feeling too hot right now. You can see I'm favoring one of my sides a little bit. He's got berries. That's oh, true. That's true. I offer him a handful of berries. Oh. Suck it up, Buttercup. <laughs> and I'll, I'll I'll chew him down. That was a one d four plus one, correct? Yep, correct. Does that help at all? 
That gives me three, which puts me... That's not very good. Still at half. Eh, I'll go first. Okay. Uh, the head of the goblin boss that you just killed is right by the door. Uh, I pick you know, it up. Okay. You notice yeah. that the door opens in. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you want to do? I pick up the head. Mm -hmm. I open hey, the door. Hey, you guys! What are you doing in here? <laughs> <laughs> I slowly open the door. Put your fingers through its mouth. I, I put the head in first. Beautiful. Uh, you hear a screeching sound, another door open, and the pitter-patter of a lot of feet. As you look around the corner, you see one horrified goblin leaving and one horrified goblin at the other end. Ah! <laughs> 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 and I say, do you want to end up like this motherfucker? In what language? Let's see. I can. Do do... Esta la biblioteca? I can yes. do common, dwarvish, and draconic. Gonna try common? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so they don't understand? Doesn't understand, but he certainly understands. Uh, Okay, lower. <laughs> My goblin boss was shorter than oh, that. Oh, sorry. Is this him? Yeah. Oh. A little more. <laughs> Is this your boss? Uh, he was shorter. Is that your boss? <laughs> That's my boss. So I hold the head and I go, I order him to the ground. Uh, you can Pointing. see him. You can see him. Looking at that door. Uh, odd, uh, he'll freeze even. He's going to make a run for it. Four. Boom. Jesse Owens heads out that door. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, this area appears to be another weapons store, uh, but for ranged weapons. Bows, oh. crossbows, bolts, arrows. Uh, there does not appear to be anybody in here at this moment in time. Nice. Maybe you this is where know. they put the good stuff. Yeah, you only know that at least two goblins were here. Do you see anything you can use? Well, where did they go? They went out the back. Yeah, I'm gonna go through the door real quick and look to see uh -huh. where they're running to. Make sure they're uh, gonna cause a problem. You do not see them. Okay, that's fine. So okay. they are they are not here out. Okay. So you surmise they've even moved under or moved under? Investigation, sure. I get 14. Okay. I'll come back in. Well, it looks like we lost him. So, uh... Thank God. Yeah. Eric, what's your problem. investigation roll? My investigation is going to be a 13. Uh, you both beat me. So uh, you find a hand crossbow uh, nice. with six bolts. Uh, you also found, uh, let's see, uh, four arrows in immaculate condition. Nice. Ooh, cool. I'll take those if you don't mind. No, go ahead. Those are plus one arrows. Oh, uh, beautiful. The hand crossbow is normal, but it is compact. So there's that. Uh, everything else seems to either be in progress or damaged. By those filthy bastard of goblins. Sons of bits. Oh, I turn Sorry. around and I tell Carrick, I'm like, hey, you probably could use the rest of these berries. Here's two more handfuls. Are you sure? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's a one shot, Carrick. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll eat them all down. Sure. That's 2d4, so the first one's a one. No ones. <laughs> no ones. No ones? Okay, so then it's a three. Unless you roll a one three times in a row, then it's a okay. One. Fair enough. Fair enough. House yeah, so rules. That's, that's a three and a three plus two, two. so it'd be uh, eight. Eight. Yeah. Th thank you. Great part there for me. Eight. That's a little bit you're, better. You're a gloom stalker, not a mathematician. That's true. <laughs> that's very very true. <laughs> so uh, you know that there are at least two hostiles in here somewhere in this complex. Uh, I keep the head with me. Sure. You can start talking to him. Sure. Are you talking to me? Wilson! 
<laughs> so now now you got somewhat of a problem uh being warriors you know that there are hostiles around and they know you are here so you are either going to have to flee and hope to get away from them in the darkness or hunt them down and kill them Hmm. The area that we're in, is it able to be secured? Uh, not so much, because there's no doorknob. Well, there's right. nothing that we can put up against the door. Dead bodies. <laughs> well, well, no, actually, both doors open out. So, yeah. <clears throat> Give me a perception check, both of you. 15. 14. You both hear the rattling of what sounds like metal gates. Ah, oh, god damn it. Well, we know where he went, and I'm going to start making my way towards the uh, temple. Sure. With, I'm going to get my longbow out this time. Mm. I'm going to step just outside the uh, armory here, and I'm going to use the corner of the building. I'm going to look out real quick to make sure there's not the two of them. There's just maybe just one of them, or make sure there's not more than two, and I'm going to get a little outclassed here. Sure. Uh, as you peek around the corner, uh, you audibly hear glass breaking from the temple area, and you see one of the gates swinging. So, kind of looks like they smashed the lock and gone in. At least one of them. Well, I hope that doesn't bring anybody that we don't want here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I don't see any of them around, though. They've clearly you, gone in. You do not see anybody in the darkness, especially with your enhanced uh, dark vision. Okay. All right, then. Well, um, I have the idea of being in a building with a gate <clears throat> better than being in a building with no doorknobs. So sure. uh, I'm going to uh, let Cloric explore the uh, little uh, weapon uh, storage building for a second. I'm going to creep out over there and see if I can investigate a little bit and see if I can maybe see if it's one or two or more in the temple. Sure. Uh, as you do so, uh, there's no more glass breaking, which is a plus. I assume you're telling Clark where you're going. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, you go in uh, to the front gate. You notice that, as expected, the lock has been smashed off. Uh, one of the gates is kind of uh, in disarray. But you look in. Uh, the temple area is kind of a story and a half. Uh, it's not a uh, it's not a huge temple. It, it's made of limestone, not the field stone that the rest of the place is made out of. So it, it's temple-ish. As you look in, uh, it looks like it's in a kind of a plus formation with the center being wider than the tips. Uh, on the far window with the moon rising behind it, you notice uh, a stained glass window sits against the far wall and moonbeams are coming in on the altar just in front of the altar is a dead goblin covered in glass hmm. Hmm. interesting um can i tell from this distance before going in can i tell what killed him no uh but you do see some glass sticking out of Okay. But looking around, the only thing you notice is the stained glass window, and it's in good shape. Okay. And it actually looks like, because, you know, this doesn't mean anything at all. Uh, it looks like this. Oh, cool. So it looks like a halfling god of war. Oh, cool. Nice. The moonbeams oh, are coming in uh, right here on the tip. And this parallelogram looking half moon. So gotcha. the, the rising moon is directly coming in and shooting right down onto the altar. The altar is also limestone. It's flat. And the altar pieces are still there. Uh, a moment oh, okay. later, uh, you hear you feel a tap on your shoulder. Cloric has examined the stuff. Uh, she is there with you. Yes, yeah, so I point see? out everything. Okay. Uh, yeah, but you only see one inside. Well, either uh, the other one's still out there, or I can't see them. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Oh, but uh, 
Do we think? Um, do we think that the front door that they smashed through uh, might have been like there was a there was a trap? He was. You said he was in bed of the glass. Mm -hmm. Did he? Uh, maybe something fell on him, or uh, he ran through. Maybe it was like you know he, he's just dumb. You know he didn't realize that the glass door was just really clean, and oh, he went charging cool. through it and he got all sliced up. Sure, um, like a convenience but, store. Right, right. Uh, well, you can't remember this is a story and a half. Uh, so oh, yeah. this this little entry alcove is one story, and then it kind of opens up in a temple chapelistic kind of thing. So you don't know if there was a chandelier above, oh, I see. Uh, okay. or or anything like that, or if there are stained glass windows on the side. Because okay. you guys have not ventured around either side, so. Okay. Well. Uh... Oh, and the altar pieces uh, shine like silver. Nice. So, what do you mean by altar pieces? Uh, cup, chalice, holy symbol, uh, All right, plate, Catholic. candle, candlesticks, yeah. or something. Yeah, Eucharistic plate, you know, shit like that. Cool gobl goblets. Catholics have awesome chalices. <laughs> of course. Um, well, what do you think, Lorik? I know kind of investigating the area first is kind of my, my duty and our, you know, rogue companion who's no longer with us. Well, but... I am superstitious, so. That is I, true. It's got us I in trouble a few times. I put my faith in, in, in you and your scientific abilities. Okay, well, uh, let me uh, let me look around for traps, make sure there's nothing else going on here, any sort of... Uh, you know, unseen things that we're not fully aware of before we sure. fully investigate. Nope, not a problem. You mean investigation. Okay. Okay. Um, 17 plus 1. 18. Well, there's no uh, plate glass door there, so uh, the uh, village pantry doors are not present, so the glass didn't come from the beginning. Uh, you don't see any trip wires. You don't see any depressed stones. Uh, they're all happy stones. Uh, but the short shoot into the main chapel area appears to be clear with no signs of danger. But uh, you do notice that it does open up. So the second one could be around the corner. You just are not sure. Okay. I want to stealthily move my way in, start looking around. I'm not going to light a torch or anything. I'm going to work through the dark and just try to see what I can surmise in here. I'm sure there's plenty of moonlight coming in with the, the moonbeams you said coming through the stained glass. So Correct. I'm it's sure it's, it's blue. It's all blue light. Because it's classier cool. that way. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Some ambiance, for sure. Yeah. And, and as long as it's on a black light, because I don't want to see certain no, things. Oh, yeah, no. That, that, that would be... Uh... Uh, although we are rated for mature audiences, that might be overboard. You do notice that that, <laughs> yeah. that, that oval, that half moon thing, looks a lot like this part. So, The holy symbol it, we saw yeah, inside. Yeah, kind of the backwards halo kind of thing. So you got that going for you, so you know you're in the right spot. Uh, go ahead and give me your stealth roll. Will do. Uh, 15 plus 2 is a 17. Oh, yeah. You're quiet as a church mouse. I just make my way through. I make a circuit throughout the <clears> main <throat> area there around the altar. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm just looking around, mm -hmm. looking at the windows, um, seeing if there's any other stained glass windows that might be broken in here or um, part of the ceiling might have fallen in, any sort of other areas like that that might be damaged. Or... Sure. Uh, the ceiling itself is kind of pitched in an arch formation. It's got a, a very long timber uh, going all the way to the top of that stained glass window on the far side where it's secured in. To the right, which would face the front of the fortress, those windows uh, are all damaged uh, and there is glass close by. Uh, the body itself, however, is right in front of the altar in the center. Uh, no pews, this is medieval, so no pews. Uh, Go ahead and give me an insight check on that. Yeah. You got it. Uh, now my luck starts to change. That's a two plus three. That's a five. Uh, the glass could have fallen in on him and killed him. Uh, you you recall that it didn't take much for you 
to uh, knock out that goblin who put the blade to you, the one with the bad knee. Right. Well, then I'm going to make my way upstairs um, and uh, like in the side corridors, I'll see if there's a stairway that leads to that little um, half floor you mentioned above. Nope. Nothing like that. Nope. No choir. Uh, uh, no choir pit. Uh, it's just the altar, the goblin, uh, and the stained glass window, which sits about three feet off the floor. Is it a full moon? Yeah, it's full moon. Mm. I should have rolled well, for good. weather, but I forgot to. <laughs> well, this looks like a good place as any to bunker down for the night. I agree, yes. Okay, are we checking the body or just assuming it's dead? <laughs> yeah, we can uh, we can take a look. We can investigate a little bit. I'll post it see. with my staff. Uh, it's dead. Uh, there, there's a lot of blood underneath it. Uh, as you poke it, you knock its elbow loose, uh, and there's a little silver plate that it was holding. So he was trying to steal from the temple? Looks like it. Fucker. What an idiot. Um, I'm going to take one of my arrows. Sure. And I'm going to take that little disc. I'm just going to push it out of his hand and you know, pull it out. See if anything happens when it gets touched. Uh, it scrapes along the bottom. You notice that it's inscribed with some kind of religious connotation around the edge. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to very cautiously move forward and I'm going to try to just like testing a door sure. <laughs> for a fire behind. I'm going to kind of tap it once or twice before I pick it up. I don't want to have a full on grasp in case something does. Happen. No. It, it tings. So it's definitely metal uh, through and through, not a metal covering. Uh, it, it sounds like uh, a small like uh, dish would sound, but it's, it's all metal. Maybe you should put a glove on first. No glove, no love. Uh, well, I have my uh, <laughs> my archery hand sleeve. I can still have that on, I suppose. And I'll reach for it. I'll try to grab onto it with the clothed three fingers of my my right hand. <laughs> uh, you uh, got to so paranoid right now. <laughs> yeah, you kind of kind of pick it up, kind of look at it, and. Uh... Uh, it's, it's it's finally made. It's got two crossed swords, is what the uh, connotation is in the center, and then you know it's got the one ring saying around the outer edge. Yeah, of uh, course. Everybody, give me perception check. Perception uh, nineteen for me. You both hear uh, like screeching, mm -hmm. like glass screeching. Great. I'm going to, as I notice this, I'm going to take the dish and I'm going to set it back on the altar and start reaching for weapons, not grabbing weapons out, but just having my hands ready mm -hmm. in case something jumps out of the dark. Sure. Uh, Clark, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm going to be like grabbing my hand axes and stuff and going, God damn it, I just want to go to sleep. As Carrick, Carrick, as you take the little saucer and put it back onto the altar, you notice that the stained glass figure shown here moves out of the stained oh, glass uh, and approaches and swings its, it's just a long sword, but he's a halfling. So uh, he swings it over top of the altar uh, where you are putting down the thing. I will do that at disadvantage. Yay. <laughs> a nine and a one. The blade hits all of the altar pieces and sends them flying as you leap back uh, to avoid getting chest cut. Everybody roll initiative. And Cloric says, dude, Really? Yeah. Uh, 19 for me. Nice. Uh, five. So 
So beats my three. Uh, Carrick, uh, you leap back. Holy shit, the glass thing's alive. <laughs> <laughs> this is a stained glass gola. A little awesome. watered down because it's a halfling. Can you talk okay. to golems? Sure, you can talk all day long. <laughs> I'm going to, um, my hands pull out the hand axes. I uh, We didn't take that. We're returning that. This asshole here tried to steal it, not us. And I'm just going to hold. I'm just going to ready an attack if it attacks me. I'm not going to sure. attack it first, though. Okay. Because I'm assuming uh, it's trying to attack us because we're intruders or something. That's what my so that's what Carrick's mindset is. He thinks he thinks uh, I stole the disc. Well, with an intelligence modifier of minus three, I'm sure you'll understand that. Uh, <laughs> Cork, what do you want to do? Um. <clears throat> so it's made of glass yes it's stained glass so it's two dimensional sweet and maybe three dimensional but it's you know yay wide but yes well watching young Sherlock Holmes I remembered this as a very fun creature to use I love it I love it she hates it when I watch that movie just detests it. I don't hate it. It's just like we've seen it so many times. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna roll to hit. Okay. <laughs> She's like, fuck diplomacy. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Can we reason with it? Uh, 11. <laughs> My blade. Uh, swing and a miss. Damn it. Uh, stained glass golem is not happy. So, Carrick, uh, you see that it is ready in an attack. Did you want to? Now unleash hell before I... Oh, yeah, we're going to let it go. And because of my dread <laughs> ambusher, I'm going to be able to attack it twice. Sure. Okay, the uh, one is going to be a 19. The other one's going to be a 13. One hit, one miss. Okay. We'll do the 1d6 plus 2 is going to be 5 points of damage from the hand axe. It's going to be a long night for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will go odd even, odd Cloric, even Carrick. That's four. We're going after Carrick. Uh, that blade comes swooshing across again. Ooh, 19 on the roll. Uh, that's going to hurt. I need a constitution check. Carrick. Yep. You are going to take a murder hobo and a two. Oh, uh, you're you're taking eight damage. And a constitution roll. First off, thank you for the berries. They're gone now. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> I thought you might need the, them. That's it. The con save is going to be a 17, though. So hopefully that will help. Uh, that the, the shards of glass emitting from this creature do not hit you. End of round one. Uh, Cloric and Carrick. This guy's gonna cause some problems he's gonna hurt you so Carrick you're up again um okay well if you're not mad before you better get mad now (laughs) yeah start raging yep all right I'm gonna go and I'm gonna just open up on him oh oh, no uh the first (laughs) attack (laughs) the first attack is a 10 okay that's a miss but the second one is a 12 that's a miss (laughs) <laughs> All right, so yeah, hand axe just sing through the air. Don't hit anything. You're just like nails yep. on chalkboard. <laughs> uh, Cloric, you see your associate attempt valiantly, but doesn't seem to do anything. Don't think he has the diamond tip on his blade to carve this thing up. <laughs> okay, so I guess I'll have to rage. Rage, rage against the darkness of the light. Oh, that'll help you with the slashing damage. There we go. 17. 17 hits. Uh, you better start doing big dick damage on this thing. Because it's bad I don't ass. have a dick. <laughs> Should have taken it from the goblin you'd be headed. <laughs> That's true. Make a necklace out of I it. I still have his head, though. Uh, we, we've had a player play whose character collected dicks Penises, on a necklace. Yeah. Beautiful. She was a Gen Con, too. <laughs> uh, 
That's where we first learned about it. She goes, my character does this. You ever thought about playing on our podcast? (laughs) So 16 damage. 16 big dick damage. Uh, And I take the head and I throw it at him. Nice. Nice. Uh, Odd this time. I'm going after the barbarian. Uh, 7 plus 6, 13. Oh, give me a constitution check then. Uh, no murder hobos this time. Uh, six damage though. Fifteen. Uh, you also missed the glass shards, but you do take six. You take six slashing damage, but it's half because you're raging. You take three slashing damage. As you get that little cut that will not heal from wraiths ring uh and that brings us to round three carrots uh, all right i'm going to take the hand axis cross him and i'm going to say mark him and the hunter's mark is going to go off on this guy my last spell of the day there it goes and then i'm going to go ahead and get put the hunter's mark on him i'm going to attack uh just the once though because i just cast that spell you know what don't roll the d6 to attack kids <laughs> Rolling to attack with a eleven, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it looked great, but I uh, just did not connect. <laughs> well, he was too busy dodging the skull, and I took him out of alignment for you. That's it. That's it. Cloric, <laughs> uh, uh, not a lot of chips on this thing, so he's still in pretty good shape. All right, here we go. If you reckless attack, it's a barbarian feature, you get advantage. <clears throat> but then they get advantage to attack you, so it's a gamble. I'm not yep. sure if you want to go there or not. I don't know what that means, but I roll. If you if you just go back you just go ham crazy, on it, yeah. uh, you get to roll two attack die uh, and take the highest. Oh, that's okay, because I got an 18. That hits. And we'll go with the... She is raging. I am with caution. That's it. She knows what she's doing. Okay. <laughs> Hardly. Uh, let's see. It's a plus four and two is twelve. Another good whack at it. Uh, maybe a little sliver. Maybe a little crack. Maybe a little crevice. Uh, five. Maybe a little penis. That's right. <laughs> No penis on this thing that you can see. Uh, five, that's an odd. It's going after Clorik again. Ugh. That's the six. Uh, so 12 to attack? Nope. Swing yes. and a miss. Karen, <laughs> bring it up. Round three of this yeah. clearly deadly encounter. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be fun. Um I'm we debating get whether I, we're sleeping yeah. through the night. That's it. I'm debating if I want to disengage and just try to get the hell out of here. Um, my eyes dart to the door for a moment just to make sure we're not sealed in or anything. Nope. But, uh, Straight out. Attack again. First attack. Oh my god, guys, this is. Oh my gosh. Change your dice. Change your right. dice. I'm about to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So the first attack is going to be a six. That's a miss. And the second one's going to be a nine. Uh, also a miss. Uh, Cloric, uh, while you're fighting this creature by yourself, what would you like to do? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just dancing in the nap? corner. What are you doing? <laughs> All right. I'll I'm attacking it. the wall in the corner. There's a different stained glass window. I'm fighting that. I'll try it again. <laughs> I've got the invisible stalker, Cloric. That's you it. Keep yeah. going with the other one. The black die <laughs> seems to be working for me right now. Eh. 19? 19 Ooh. hits. Ooh, she's an ass beater tonight. Okay. Do this. Mm, that's not so good. Three, seven, nine. Yeah, you're right. Not so good, but uh, still not bad. Five. It hates your guts, Clark. Uh, mostly because <laughs> you're you're beating on it. Maybe you should You're be the only one like attacking it, it you know? Uh, <laughs> 
Ouch. Oh, 17, 23 total. Big dick damage here, boys and girls. Oh, uh, my. Give oh, your, my. Give your con save. Still no murder hobo. Oh, no. Look at her face. Did you die? No. Okay. <laughs> what, what was your con? Uh, hang on. Uh, 14. Oh, uh, yeah, you, you pass on it. Uh, nine hit points of damage rounded down to four because of your bullshit barbarian abilities. Uh, uh -huh. Round four, Carrick. Okay, well, I'm going to really actually try to do something for once. Okay, I'm like, all right, Cloric, you've had your fun. Now it's time for me to intervene here. That's all right, cute. first. Yeah, all right. All right, first attack is coming in with a 18. 18 hits. Excellent. Okay. And bonus action attack is going to be a um, 14. Ooh, so close. Oh, so close. Yet 15 so is your magic number. So, nope, does right. not make it, but you got one. I do. All right. Well, Welcome to the party, two. pal. That's it. All righty. With the Hunter's Mark damage added in, that's going to be 10 points of damage. Nicely done. Kind of roll, roll, roll good for once. Uh, Chloric. Boom, baby. Drop the hammer again. Uh, we'll try. Uh, uh, oh. 13. Not enough. Uh, oh, or Carrick did not appreciate you attacking it. That's all right. That's all right. Number three. Nap 20. <laughs> oh, man. Nice. Give me your con save. All righty. Six plus two, eight. Uh, there's a murder hobo. How many oh, hit points man. you got right now? How many hit points do you have? I have at 19 right now, oh. which is just above half my hit points. Oh, that's not too bad. Uh, 13 hit points of damage. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I am not. He got hit by the additional shards of glass. Oh, man. <laughs> awesome. Uh, but round five. Eric, time for some payback on this guy. Uh, we might want to consider getting the fuck out of here. <laughs> and I'm going to, with six hit points remaining, I'm just going to yell at him. I go, run, run, <laughs> forest. Uh, I should just disengage, get the hell out of here. But uh, maybe you've almost got him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking not. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, you know, fuck it. It's a one shot. I'm gonna attack him again. That's oh right. my god! Screw it. Who cares if I die? Here we go. Ready? I'm not even joking. Here's the first one. That's a two. Okay. <laughs> Here's the second one. Natural one. No. Oh fuck. <laughs> Oh, oh Frank man, Frank, this is going to be, you know what? I'm going to finally die on this show. I love it. <laughs> okay, um, so the net one, I got to roll, what, a d12 to not kill Chloric? Is that how it goes? Uh, uh, no, you do the damage, and then you okay. have it. It takes half. That's friendly fire half damage. Oh, I see, but it does, it does get to automatically hit her? Is that how it goes? Oh, yes. yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> You don't so, miss with uh, a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So the damage, luckily the hunter's mark does not apply. So it's just going to be four plus two. That's six. Halved is going to be three. Okay. Is it piercing? It is slashing damage. It's a hand axe. Uh, one hit point of damage because she's already Oh, yeah, because barbarian. Yep. That's right. Bullshit barbarian. One hit point of damage courtesy of your associate. Hey, he, at least he's hitting something. That's the yeah. important part. Thanks uh, for waking up. <laughs> he, he almost hit you. Shit, twice. sorry. <laughs> uh, Warwick, you're up. She maybe rages out and kills me. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe there's a healing potion in here. It is a temple. Um, <laughs> so I yell at him. I'm like, just get out. Leave. Okay. And then I rolled a hit. Sure. Him or <laughs> yeah. 
You had to ask. I said, I always thought you were really cute. Goodbye. <laughs> this, this is where Gandalf turns into the gray and gets all those experience points. Uh, 16? Hits. Okay, and... and uh, 14. Big dick damage. Notice I'm not saying it's dead. <laughs> yeah, we're aware. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's got quite a few nicks mm. and dings in it now. Not uh, enough. Carrick, <laughs> Uh, Cloric has told you to get the hell out. Do you want to get no. the hell out? Yeah, I'm going to go ahead for my action I'm going to disengage, and I'm going to sure. just run back out towards the front. Sure. Uh, as you get there uh, in the moonlight, give me a perception check. Sure. Uh, 18 plus 5, so 24. 23. Hey, one of those goblins that escaped headed your way. It is. 60 feet away. Hmm. Excellent. Um, well, that's my turn. Everything I just did. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. It can. Uh, it's not going to be here next round. Cool. So it's, it's coming at you. Uh, Caloric, you're up. Hey. <clears throat> oh, 19. 19 hits. I think I might have skipped the golem's attack that round. Yeah. I oh, no. Uh, go ahead. You hit me. He stood there and laughed as I ran away like a sissy. Right. That's true. He's doing that bowling move. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> 12. Ouch. Well, this will probably be the last attack. Uh, the golem doesn't even have to roll. It's mad as hell at you. Uh, fourth. Oh my god! Natural twenty, baby. Oh my I, goodness! I am on fire. Give me you your, are. Uh, this is insane. I love it. Give me your con save, there, Clark. Thirteen. Thirteen saves against the additional d six. Oh, juicy! Eleven on the roll. Uh, plus four, give me 15 cut in half, seven hit points of damage, Cloric, as it carves a swath across you. Still alive? Yeah. You're up. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Carrick, you're up. Take both my hand axes and I just punt them down into the ground so they embed in the ground. I pull my longbow off my back, knock an arrow, and I'm going to fire at that goblin. Sure. <clears throat> my only natural 20 for the freaking night it's on a goblin <laughs> there, there, there you at go. least there's one hey at yeah. least i'm gonna do something you know yeah. you might actually so, kill him yeah so that's a 24 to hit which i'm assuming will hit yeah that uh, let's see damage it's gonna be 2d6 plus two uh that's four plus two just six points of damage though with a long shot uh long shot in mid stride, you catch him right in the forehead, and he just flops down. Nice. Uh, he's not dead, but he does have an arrow in his head. Uh, he's falling on me much good. And and he's he's considered prone next round. There's uh, a moment that I just yeah yeah that's how you do it. see this is what I was saving it for this vicious vile goblin war chief. Uh, Cloric, <laughs> your opponent is not looking good. Uh, what do you want to do? Like that. I'm going to hit that motherfucker. I hope. And let's remember, boys and girls at home, Frank said this was a toned down version of this creature. <laughs> yeah, the full blown version has 120 points. <laughs> oh, yeah, beautiful. And does two attacks. <laughs> 16. 16 hits. Love it. 15 is what you need. And you've done 78 hit points of damage. Uh, 16, 18. Damage? Yep. 
With a mighty nice. swing, much like Conan the Destroyer, the stained glass window sustains a vicious hit from the great axe from Cloric and shatters everywhere. Yes. Cloric, give me your constitution save. Aww. Well, you just shattered glass everywhere. 18? Uh, but none of it comes towards you. Nice. Tarek, behind you, you just hear this earth-shattering calamity of noise. Uh, your goblin is... Retarded. <laughs> uh and, and you are at advantage because he's still kind of trying to get up. yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna try to finish him off here Ooh, at advantage i'm glad uh the advantage is going to be a 19 to hit yep okay DC, oh sorry it's a, you know i rolled <laughs> didn't roll the right hit die last time it's a d8 so d8 plus two is going to be uh six points of damage much like all of the heroic archers in this world you embed the second arrow into the first, pushing both arrowheads into nice. the small, depleted brain pan of the goblin and blow out the back of his head like Kennedy. Too soon? Maybe. Wow. Uh, he is dead. Where's Jackie? Deader than dead. Uh, Jackie's in the stained glass window. Uh, the stained glass window is now completely destroyed. Uh, Fucker. The moonlight just fills... Uh, the area with white light, pale light, not blue anymore, uh, and just shines right on the altar. Uh, Kara turns around. <laughs> <laughs> I had the big guy. You shot a fucking goblin. <laughs> uh, what would you guys like to do? I hop up on the altar and lay down to take a nap. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, all the altar pieces have been brushed away. Uh, Carrick, what do you want to do? Now that I realize everything's over, I'm going to limp back into the <laughs> temple. Before I go in, I'm going to look around just to make sure there's nobody else coming up on us here. Perception check. Yeah, yeah lock the fucking gates. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, 18 plus 5, 23. You don't see anybody. I'm going to move back in. I'm going to take a little bit of the rope out of my pack. I'm going to tie the, the gate shut in a series of elaborate knots. Sure. And uh, I take my blade and cut right through. <laughs> there we go. There's that. No, there's always that. <laughs> and I'm going to go in and check on Cloric. And I see she's already passed out. So I'll take the first watch. Sure. Cloric right. thanks you. <laughs> All of the altar pieces are on the floor from the first strike if you want to collect those. I don't really want to touch any of that, but uh, I like that they're there. That's good. <laughs> uh, on your watch, go ahead and give me an investigation check. Yep. Okay, 15 plus. See, I'm rolling super high on skill checks tonight, but I can't hit the broadside of a barn. The uh, 15 plus uh, one, 16. Uh, as you're making the rounds, uh, checking, the stained glass window was three feet off the ground. It is now big fucking opening uh so it's a good thing that you're taking watch you also notice that in the moonlight uh you can see uh there's a discoloration on, on the back side of the altar like the limestone is all one tone except for this rectangular piece at the mm. very back where the cleric would stand hmm i'll um I'll go in and to look a little bit closer at that, I actually step up and over the three foot opening and just kind of walk straight in towards it sure. and uh, just investigate first. Now she's laying on top of the altar. So I'm not gonna do anything stupid, like try to pry it open or open it or anything. I just want to see what it is first. Well, it, it sits on the back side of the altar. She's mm -hmm. on top right? and it's, it sits on the back side and it looks like, give me an insight check. Nine plus three, twelve. It's like a little slider door. Like a confessional? No, more like a pocket door, mm. but but about eight inches tall. I'm going to open it slowly. <laughs> Inside, uh, there is an unleavened loaf of bread. Uh, there is a golden 
saucer. Uh, and near the back, there are three potion bottles. Two are blue, one is yellow. Mm. Interesting. Well, um, I'll leave those there for now. And I'll definitely make note of it once Clark has had enough of a rest. <laughs> so like that she is more rejuvenated. I will uh, let her know. Cool. Uh, I, I'll give you a three hour rest, give you a short rest. You guys can collect your hit dice back. Uh, during that time, Carrot, D12. Oh, yes. Oh, a 12 right there. 11. 2. Uh, nothing. No sounds, no change in weather. Uh, you, you hear kind of a noise uh, coming from the parapet area, uh, but looking out, you don't see anything. Okay. I'll just stay in the temple and uh, just keep looking out. So I'm looking out the open window and after <clears throat> a requisite time, I'll go ahead and wake up Clark, let her know it's time for her watch. Let's let's and do I'll, four hours. Okay, <clears throat> I'll, and I'll let her know that the little the little um, slider okay. door and there's something in there. And then uh, yeah, I'll um, just kind of rest up as best I can. So we sure. get a short rest. I'll burn all four of my hit dice and get hit points back because I'm pretty low right now. Sure. Uh, Not sure if that matters in a one shot, but that's what I'm going to do. Well, it means you aren't going to die. That's true. Cloric, uh, uh, you can uh, roll your hit dice if you'd like. Go ahead and recover your hit points. So I go all the way back up to full. Nice. 30, no, See, I'm not full you spread. were whining about dying. <laughs> That's it. That's it. It's hard in hell to kill people in 5e. It kind of is, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, Carrick has told you about this super secret slider door. The silver altar pieces are on the floor from where they were knocked down by the stained glass uh, golem. Mm -hmm. um, you're on watch, D12 against me. Weezer, thank you. Four. Yeah, you hear the noise that uh, Carrick heard in the corner. Uh, and as you glance out of the big three foot off the floor opening, you see some kind of giant centipede milling about. Uh, but it does not come towards you at this time. Uh, you keep an eye on it for quite a while, uh, and it seems to disappear underneath the parapet. So is this like tremors? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it's like uh, Titanoboa or Sharknado or something Oh, else. Lord. Okay. But uh, you guys do make it through to the morning as the sun begins to break. Uh, you still need to get the hell out of Dodge. Uh, there are no other goblins. So that's a plus. Uh, Cloric, are you going to tell Carrick about the strange cephalopod? Of course. Uh, you still have the silver altar pieces. You have the golden plate. You have the three potions. And you have the unleavened bread. Or you can just leave it all alone and just get the hell out of Dodge. Mm, yeah, we take all <clears throat> that shit with us. Who's touching it? Oh, Oh, we're going to take it all with us. Who's touching <laughs> it? Oh, not me. Do we have I'm going to not touch. I'm going to opt to not touch the plate again, but you can go right ahead. Uh, okay, let's just get the hell out of here. <laughs> uh, who wants to D12 against me? Not me. Okay, I'll do it. There we go. I was going to say I was the one going to lead us out anyway with my survival. Okay, I got a nine. I got a four. Uh, it's first light. Uh you guys know that the humanoids will be on the march if they aren't already so. Uh, you can head out the back and uh, head deeper into halfling territory. Or you can uh, continue to explore. Well, I vote for, um, as best we can, move, move along the border. 
trying to make our way towards where we would have been going after our excursion to uh, that we were hired by uh, Lord Helmbeek uh, and try to go along the border to not be in the territory of either of these warring factions and hopefully make our way uh, unobserved into the wilderness. I agree. Survival checks. Oh, God, yeah. oh boy. All right, don't fail me now, dice. Fifteen. And eighteen. Despite being harried by constant patrols, you guys managed to hide enough. Uh, in, and in three days, you find yourself in the Baron's keep, giving him a rundown of "Holy shit, you wouldn't believe what I saw." Uh, oh, by yeah. this time, all of the mud has flaked off of you. <laughs> So, good, good to know. <laughs> you, you have successfully uh, handled your mission. Of course, your fallen comrades will be etched in stone somewhere uh, or glass. You can always carve it in glass. <laughs> but it seems as though you guys have been successful. Uh, so, congratulations. Yay! Well, got Yay done. to us. We right, even got done are... early without killing Kevin. So. <laughs> I was I was actually really excited. I was like, "Ooh, yeah, yeah." Stuff. You guys, you guys took the goal of the Nobody seventy-eight dies hit points, on my watch. That's and it. then it had eighty. So when Cork hit it that last time, nice, you shattered the shit out of it. Beautiful. But yeah, it, you each you each handled yourselves well. I, I like the thrusting down of the hand axes and pulling out oh, the yeah. uh, bow for the nap. <laughs> and see, you didn't even use the plus one arrow. So, I, yeah, no, I didn't. I should have. I should uh, have. Uh, yeah, the uh, potions, extra healing, extra healing, and I was going to have you guys roll to see what the third oh, one was. Fun stuff. Uh, the altar plates that you left behind, 100 gold pieces for the gold one, 120 for all the silver shit. So you did loot. You did leave money. Being a one shot, nobody gives two crap <laughs> right. about that. Uh, Kevin, what'd you think? Oh, good stuff. Very good stuff. Yeah, the, the encounters are very, uh, very uh, differing. A lot of different crazy stuff going on. Um, now I wonder what exactly is the backstory of this little town, why all this stuff is the way it is. Um, I assume <laughs> probably the uh, the altar effect with the stained glass golem was probably supposed to be on purpose. But what of the animated armor? Interesting. Uh, the animated armor was owned by uh, the leader of the halfling. Uh, brigade uh he was torn out of it and it was designed to protect him uh the cephalopod was a carrion crawler it oh, was fun. the thing hiding underneath uh the parapet on the left on the right there was a halfling survivor oh, uh, nice. so uh had you rescued them uh you would have had even more bonus points for experience and things of that nature uh and a meat shield which is always good you know yeah there were wargs uh, oh, wow. a wolf pack wow and some needle blight uh out on the outer ring uh if you would have gone up to the parapet you would have had a clear view of the encamped army but some of the stone or no it's some of the stones were not traps per se but dangerous mm -hmm. and up on the parapet to the left uh were dead man's tears uh a magical plant so, that doesn't sound oh. good yeah and it was mud methods that you encountered to yeah, yeah, yeah so uh so yeah you guys uh got over half the encounters out of the way uh which was kind of cool uh this one Folks at home was uh, <clears throat> we were originally going to do an urban intrigue, a murder kind of uh, uh, mistaken identity kind of thing, uh, but due to uh, cast issues, uh, we went with this. So this one uh, I'm still fleshing out. Uh, it'll be done this week, but uh, these guys have helped me figure out some items that need to be fine tuned. Uh, but you guys had fun, so that is half the battle. So young That's DMs, it. nobody gives a shit as long as everybody's having fun. That is your That's main it. goal. That's um, it. Carrie, what what did you think? I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Um, 
She had some ass kicking rolls tonight. I know you were on fire. Dude. I you did, just... which is yep. surprising. The only one better was uh, my four twenty. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's it. Right there, and you have to <laughs> live with me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but you had fun. Yes. All right. Uh, Kevin, uh, tell us more about your podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Game Night Heroes. It's uh, it's out on all the main uh, podcasting things. So you know. Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, pretty much all of them. And uh, yeah, it's just good, cool storytelling uh, using role-playing games. We've got a nice long D&D arc where we are in a pirate town with Cthulhu weird creepy cults trying to kill us. That's fun. We've got a Halloween bonus episode that's like a haunted house thing. We've got a Christmas episode where it's the plot of Die Hard with elves. Fun nice. stuff. Yeah, we got some crazy wild stories out there. And uh, we're getting ready to launch into something, covering a... Uh, uh, D20 modern type game here coming up soon and uh, lots of fun stuff. Lots of fun stuff. It's, it's a good time. It's a good time. Nice. Uh, check that out, folks. Don't forget, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap, the link is below. Uh, if you want some cool math rocks, at Pirate Dog Dice, hit them up on Twitter. Uh, if you want your game to smell awesome, uh, find yourself some adventure sense from oddfishgames.com. They also make the shine system. So if you want to write gooder than me, use that. Uh, tomorrow we have the Margu guys. They are still in Chasm Peaks. Uh, still? Oh God, still in Chasm Peaks. <laughs> still. I, I think they're getting out tomorrow and they are not going to be happy with what's happened. Uh, then uh, Tuesday. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Tuesday we've got the Socium Project part. Ooh. Duh. Uh, talking about timeline and major events with our other four DMs. Uh, our, our previous four went two weeks ago. Uh, the next four are up this time. So check that out on Tuesday. Next week, back to campaign week. So we've got Cred on Thursday and Calamity A or B, not sure which, on Saturday. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Elbow Inc. Uh, and Game Night Heroes, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Have a great rest of the weekend. Let's blow them a kiss and wave. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much.